It's Jesus. I love seeing all of you. If you have your, um, you know, video yeah. on, thank you so much because it's so encouraging to talk to, you know, a person there, seeing your smiles. It's so nice. I thank you so much. I want to um, share with you briefly. Today, I know we, I had said that uh, Pastor Nicholas will be the leader, but it just so happened that I was supposed to be traveling today and I'm not traveling today. So I had um, asked him to graciously lead the meeting and he agreed. So thank you so much, Pastor Nicholas. I'm so grateful. Thank you, uh, Minister Mary. I, I, I had seen the two of you earlier. Thank you very much. Esther, Minister Esther, I see Minister Cassandra, uh, Reverend Priscilla, Jennifer, uh, I see Rachel, Elizabeth, Adrienne, Lucy, Stella, Paula, Dorcas, Oceanic. Welcome so much. I love you all with the love of Christ. Um, today we're going to read. In Matthew, I'm going to do very briefly before I invite the speakers for the day. There's two, there's two speakers. We have one, Minister Cassandra, who's going to start our session today. And then uh, Minister Esther will uh, wind up with the session today. But before they start, let us go to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, and we're going to read uh, from verse 20. And suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. What I want us to see from this is two things. This woman had an issue. The Bible says that she had gone to every doctor. She had tried everything before she went to Christ. And then she said to herself, it is very important what you say to yourself. It is very critical what you tell yourself. Because the Bible says that I believed, therefore I spoke. If you believe, you will speak. Whatever you speak is what you have believed. So it is very important to tell yourself the truth. The doctors may have told you so many other things. People may have said your marriage is falling apart. The devil may have said so many things. But what are you telling yourself? Because it is irrelevant what the doctor said. They said to her, we can't help you. She sold everything. She used so much money. And the doctors gave her a report. But we see that she never spoke that report to herself. What did she say to herself? She said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Amen. Where is your faith? What are you saying to yourself? It really doesn't matter what you have been seeing around you. It doesn't matter if that man does not uh, recognize you or respect you as a wife. It doesn't matter if that woman does not submit to you or respect you as a husband. There is something that is happening in your marriage and you, everything that is pointing to your marriage is pointing to defeat, is pointing to unhappiness. You are, you are, you are with somebody who is not your friend. You are with somebody that you fear. You are with somebody, there is so much unrest in the situation you're in. Maybe it's your children that are causing the commotion in your marriage. Maybe it's uh, work. Maybe it's lack of finances. What? Ever situation is causing unrest in your marriage. It is saying something to you. But what are you saying to yourself? This woman, the Bible says that Jesus said, <laughs> be of good cheer. Because what you said to yourself is actually what happened to you. What you said to yourself is what rescued you. Your faith has made you well. What you said to yourself actually worked for you. So today I want us to say something to ourselves. And that's something that I want us to say to ourselves is what we want to see, not what is going on. Is what God has already spoken about our situation. This woman understood that the Bible says that he will come with healing in his wings in the Old Testament. So she understood the hem will represent the wings. And that is where my healing is. But remember, you cannot say the right thing to yourself if you do not know the right thing to say. I will repeat that again. You cannot say the right thing to yourself if you do not know the, what has been spoken over your life. This woman knew the scripture. She knew healing is coming in the wings. 
She looked and she didn't see wings. She saw a hem. And she said, if I touch there, that is where my healing is. And I shall be made whole. What has God spoken about your life? What has God said about your marriages? Today, as I was thinking about it, the Holy Spirit, and I asked him, the Holy Spirit, I said, what is this? That, what is going on with the marriages? What are you seeing? He said, marriages are not saved. We need marriages to get born again. Our marriages are not born again, he said. And he also said that marriages need to be baptized. We get born again. We are baptized. We are bishops. We are pastors. We are ministers. We are everything else. But we are fighting in our marriages. We are disrespecting each other in our marriages. There is a bishop who's slapping the wife. There is a pastor who is being so mean to the wife. There is a wife who is closing the, his, the pastor, the, the, the husband, the man of God in the bedroom saying, you're not going anywhere today. We are born again as Christians. We have a name. But our marriages are not born again. He said our, our marriages need salvation. Our marriages need deliverance. Our marriages need restoration. I was like, wow. I never thought, I thought a person can be born again and that is, is, is it. He said, no. So today, I want to dare you. Because see, the reason why he's saying our marriages need to be born again. The reason he's saying that we, our marriages need deliverance. The reason he's saying that our marriages need Christ. Because you see, you can be a pastor, you can be a bishop, and you, can have, you may probably went to the church and did a wedding. But is your marriage Christ-like? Husbands, do you love your wives like Christ loves the church? Wives, are we submissive? Are we respecting each other? Are we speaking each other to each other in a nice tone? Are we looking for each other's interest instead of our own? Because Jesus never came to seek his own interest. He came for his bride. He said he selflessly. He gave his life, not because he wanted to, but because his bride needed it. He never enjoyed the suffering but his bride did because in his suffering by his stripes, his bride will be healed. By those wounds, his bride was healed. So it is not necessarily that you are enjoying what you're doing, but you're doing it for the other person. There is something that we need to understand all of us that just because you are a um, excuse me, I'm just going to just so that we can have uh, anybody who's not a speaker right now. Thank you so much. So just because you are a husband and your wife likes to be, you know, one-on-one -on -one attention, you like maybe to watch TV and your wife is talking to you and she wants you to put the remote down so that you can give her the attention. But you, you are like, uh -uh, this is not feeling good. I want to continue with that, you know. And then your wife doesn't feel appreciated because you, you did not give her the attention. It is not what you want. It is what the other person would want. It is not how do they feel appreciated. Maybe you, if you're talking to her and she's doing something else, you're fine with it. It's not a big deal. But if she does not acknowledge you coming in from work, how would you feel? Maybe she's even busy cooking, right? Those things that just leave turn the heat a little bit down, go and, you know, meet the, this husband of yours so he can feel, hey, I've, I've reached home and I'm appreciated. Not because the wife enjoys doing that, but because the husband enjoys it. You see now, marriage, it is not doing what you enjoy doing. You don't do it because you like it. You do it for the other person because they need it. Because when you do that to your husband, then he operates well as a husband. Just like a car. I don't, who, how many people like to go to a gas station? Because I don't. Only when they, you go like, oh my goodness, I need to add gas. Not because I like to drink gas, not because I like hanging out at the gas station, but because my car needs it to service me. So we need to change our mindsets in, I don't feel like doing that. I don't want to do that. No, it's not about you. Jesus never felt like dying for you. Jesus never felt like being beat up. Jesus never felt like being naked. Jesus never felt that way. And he said, that if I did that, then you ought to do that for your brothers and sisters. That is what marriage is about. It's about sacrifice. It's about finding out the other person, not getting used to the other person. So if you're born again, when you're born again, we live for Christ. 
We no longer live, but Christ lives in us. Our marriages to be born again, we no longer live for ourselves. We live for our spouses. Husband, you live for your wife. Your wife, you live for your husband. Right? And then we become like Christ. Because then we will not deal selfishly with each other. I will understand I like flowers. My husband doesn't like flowers. He likes something else. So I live, I do, I buy that thing that he likes. He likes chapati. I don't like chapati. I like ugali. Why not make a buffet? Make the stew. Cook ugali, cook chapati. Let's enjoy, right? Not, uh -uh, we have to eat one thing. If you can afford, that's fine. If not, sacrifice yourself. Let us, let, us, let us work together. Marriage is a sacrifice, just like salvation. Salvation, we are living for Christ. Our marriages need to, Christ in it, that we can be selfless. It's interesting because I used to say to myself a lot of things about my marriage. I used to, to decree, decree and declare what my husband is doing. And I even felt justified to tell other people, imagine my husband, this is my husband, that my husband, this. But when I realized that the Holy Spirit told me that you see that information you have taken, when you, everything is good in your marriage, people do not remember that. They only remember the bad things that you said about your husband. Because when, how many people, when things are good, you go back to the same people that you told all those things and tell them now things are good. He's doing these things. He's doing, when? Never. It is very hard. And you don't even remember the people that you told. And he said, those are the tongues that are rising against your marriage. When your marriage is trying to stand up, those tongues are talking and saying, ah, you just wait and see. The other day they beat each other up. The other day she was here telling me how her husband, look at how they're holding each other's hands. Wait and see. Yeah. They are, you see, those are the tongues that are rising against your marriage. You have given them the power. So like this woman, let us learn to tell ourselves what the word of God has said. Not what the, our, our marriage is, what it looks like. Not what other people have said, because other people can tell you, hey, that man, you should leave him. If you're in danger, we always say, and Pastor Nicholas is very good about this, always say, if you're in danger, if somebody is beating you up, I do not recommend you staying there. Because people have died, people have been killed, people have been mined and, and made disabled. You cannot live with somebody who is threatening to kill you or beating you up. You need to take um, a charge Get yourself out of that dangerous situation. Get help. Don't pray and get killed in the same place. There's uh, people of God perish for lack of knowledge. We must have knowledge. You are not married to be beaten up. No, you are married to, to live together. I usually tell my husband, if you are not here to build each other up and to help each other get to the next level and to fulfill our God-given purposes, then there is no point of being together because you're both grown-ups. You can work for yourself. I can work for myself. Nobody is an in invalid here that I need you. No, we are here because we want to be here, not because we need to be here. No, everybody is just in the same way. No widow or no widower is dead because their, their spouse died. No, it is something that we do consciously and willingly. That's why Jesus never tells us, you have to be born. You have to accept me. You have to want me. No, he doesn't force you. It is to your benefit because he's such a wonderful husband. So, I pray today that we make a conscious decision to say what God has said about our marriages, to say to ourselves, this woman said to herself, because the minute you say to yourself, you will act accordingly. So read the word of God, know what God has said about your marriage, then say it to yourself, believe it and receive it in Jesus' name. Because guess what? Jesus is going to say what you said. Is what you'll receive because that was that is where your faith is. Hallelujah! Without uh, further ado, I'm going to invite our speaker for the uh, the first speaker for the day, Minister Cassandra Javant. She is such a wonderful, wonderful uh, friend, minister. I love her so much. With we are together with her in California, and there is no you know there's that connection that God gives you. There is a God connection. She actually. Um, never met my mom, but she met her in a dream. God introduced my mom to her in a dream. And then we even we actually had such a wonderful first meeting. And from then on, our lives are just, we just need together. And I love her with everything I have. She is such, she hears the Holy Spirit. Amen. I just love her. She just taps in. 
And I, I, I can go on and on. She, can you imagine she goes to hospitals to pray to strangers, for strangers, as the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And actually, we met one of our patients who I was taking care of and she was praying for. Now we are all friends. The patient, Cassandra and I, and we met like that. So God is so great, gracious um, to give us such a blessed and a wonderful person who's sold out to God and hears from the Holy Spirit. And I'm excited to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say through her. So welcome, Minister Cassandra. Good morning and good evening. Uh, God bless you all. I'll, I'll start out with prayer. I, I have to do that. Father, I come boldly before your throne of grace this morning, Father. I thank you for your mercy, your grace. I thank you that you are the great I am. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning. You are the end. And Father, I thank you that you shape, Father, the words that come out of my mouth, Father. May it line up with your word, Father. I ask the Holy Spirit to just set the atmosphere. Father, I, I bow. I humble myself to you, Father to be used by you, Father, and to speak, Father, what you would have me to speak. I thank you that you are the potter and I am yet clay in your hands. And so, Father, I thank you for each and every person that is here, their families, Father, their marriages, Father. Father, I thank you that you take us to another level. You take us to a higher level, Father, in our marriages, in our relationships, Father, that you will get the glory out of it, Father. And when the world looks at us, Father, they see you. So, Father, be magnified and be glorified. In the mighty name of your darling son, Yeshua Messiah, I pray. Amen and amen. Whew. Okay, so... I'm always one that will always say, I will only do what my father says. And we live in a time where, where it's all about me, 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 you know, what I want, what I should say, what I should do. And then we fail to listen to what the Holy Spirit says. And oftentimes, even in our marriages, the Holy Spirit is saying, wait, don't do this or do that. But yet we, we want to get ahead of God. And so there's two words the Father gave me this morning, where he gave me yesterday as I was seeking the Father all week long and, and last week. Okay, Father, what is it that you want me to, to, to minister? And again, I never try, never want to go ahead of him. And sometimes we can get our own selves involved. Say, okay, maybe I should say this and maybe I should teach on that. But the Father said, no, I need you to, to draw the women and the men's attention to the fact that I said not to be anxious. And I said, okay, Father, what do you mean? Okay, let's go to the word. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, amplified version. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, in every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. What does that look like? We, we write petitions for all types of things. We have laws that are written. The, the, the word of God is, is law. It, 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 it's a principle to everything. But why do we not make a petition regarding our marriages? Why do we not put scriptures together with our desires for our husband, our desires for our wife? Why do we not go to the very thing that will, the laws of God, the principles of God to set things in order? The word tells us that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Then why do we speak more death to our situations, more death to our circumstances and not speak the word? verse seven and the peace you know before I go there anxious being worried restless concerned uneasy impatient and troubled all those things we can relate to when it comes to our relationships and our marriage 
troubled about something. Maybe things are not going the way you thought they should go. You know, well, I got married and I, I thought things were just going to be just perfect. Well, I got married and, and this blah, blah, blah. And the father is saying, blah, blah, blah. Because you are so concerned about what you want, you are not seeking me. You're not asking me what I want for your marriage. He designed it. From the beginning of time, he designed marriage. So he's the, the greatest one to come to. He is the greatest counselor. But we don't go to him. We find we, we, we grab books, we, 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 we grab a video. Okay, what is this pastor saying? And what is this person saying about marriage? <laughs> and the father says, you won't even go into the secret place. When you go into worship, I will tell you what to do. I will answer you, but you won't go. You won't come to me. You won't come into my presence. I will tell you the secret things. I have gotten so many answers in the secret place. And the father said, and you're running. How are you running? You're being anxious, trying to figure it out on your own. You're troubled because you're trying to figure it out on your own. And you won't run to him. Verse 7. And the peace of God, that peace which re reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. So we have to understand when this was written, and in and, and, and Philippi, they were used to, and they were surrounded by the guards. They were guards. They would guard the city. The houses were guarded. Everything about Philippi was guarded. So they had the mindset, and they understood what it meant to guard. So the Father is saying to us this morning to guard our hearts, guard our minds. How do we do that? We do it by the word of God. We do it by finding those scriptures. If, there, if the father has given you a promise regarding your marriage, well, father, you said that, that I can have a long and prosperous life, that my marriage will be prosperous. We'll find the scriptures that pertain to that. Oftentimes we look and we say, well, prosperous, we only think about finances. Huh. But the father wants you to prosper in wealth, not just money. He wants to touch that crooked thing in your marriage and he wants to make it straight. He wants to turn that thing that maybe witchcraft entered in, maybe demonic forces entered in, maybe something came in and walked in the door. But instead of you handling it, you're now letting the, the flesh rise up. And now you're wanting to fight that thing with your flesh. I'm telling you right now, you will never win a battle with your flesh. You will only win it with a spiritual weapon. Because you have to understand that witchcraft spirit, those demonic spirits that came in, it's a spiritual thing. It's not flesh. It's spiritual. And you have the weapons to close the doors of those spiritual attacks. You have the power and you have the authority. See, I'm already off script. You know, I wrote some things down. I'm already off script. So I'm just going to let the Holy Ghost do what the Holy Ghost wants to do. The Father says, your answers are in worship. And you say, well, how is that possible? Because here's the thing. When we go to the Father in prayer, come on. You, you can raise your hand. You can wave, whatever the case might be. You will go to the Father with your laundry list. Well, Father, you know, he doesn't do this. 
I don't see this. My children are not doing this. What about this, Father? What about that? You go to him with your laundry list. And the Father says, if you would come to me and seek my face, if you would go into the secret place with me, I will meet you there. I will tell you secret things. I will tell you, I will give you the answer. But then what we have to do is then cut out those things that block us. Those things, that, you know what it is, it's the enemy. He comes against your marriage. And so then what you have to do is block it. You have to block those demonic forces by declaring and decreeing what the word says. You have to call those things that be not as though they were. Father, I thank you that my husband is a worshiper. Father, I thank you that he goes into the secret place. And Father, when he goes into the secret place, Father, you're going to speak to him and tell him what I need. Father, I pray that my wife goes into the secret place because when she goes into the secret place, Father, you're going to tell her the secret things. You're going to tell her those things that are on my heart. And Father, I want to tell her, but Father, if I tell her, she's going to go negative. She's going to think that I'm, I'm, I'm harping on her or I'm giving her trouble. But Father, I, I want you to tell her. You tell her, Father, what I can't say to her. Because she's going to go to the negative. She's going to think that I'm picking on her. And the Father says, oh, God. The Father says, your answers are in me. You're looking to the others, you're looking to your spouse, you're looking to the one next to you, and the Father says, but your answers are in me. Why are you running around looking for answers through other people? And yes, as Giff mentioned, you, 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 you go to maybe your, 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 your in-laws, or you go to that friend, and you tell them all the problems, all the trouble, but then when the father answers you, you don't go back and share your testimony. You don't go back and tell the father, tell them what the Lord has done for you. You don't tell them. The greatest witness is you. The greatest testimony is you. Because then the father can use that testimony to help somebody else. Somebody else that all they see is darkness. They don't see any light. And the father tells us, the word tells us that we are the light bearers. But you're refusing to let the light shine. Why? Because you want to stay angry. You want to stay upset. You think the father doesn't hear you. You think nobody is listening. And the greatest intercessor that will ever be, yes, I'm an intercessor and I pray all the time, but the greatest intercessor is Jesus Christ. He knows what you need. The Holy Spirit will speak to you, but then you have to take the time to listen. But here's the thing, as I said before, you have to take authority over those things and those spirits that block your hearing, that block your seeing. Because every time you take that situation and you take it to the flesh and you go to bed angry or you wake up angry, you're not allowing the Holy Ghost fire to go into your marriages and to burn out the wickedness. Every time you decide to stay angry, wickedness is standing at the door. The enemy is crouching at the door, ready to come in and destroy. But if you would, if you would make love the center of it, love destroys hate. but you don't even want to walk in love. 
Well, Minister Cassandra, you don't know what he said to me last night. Minister Cassandra, you don't know what she said to me last night. You don't know what she said to me a moment ago. The Holy Ghost knows. He knows. Peace. Shalom. The Hebrew word for peace, harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, tranquility, all of that you can get in peace. Years ago, there was an attack on my family. There was an attack in my house. The enemy came in strong. He came in strong to take the peace. And the father said, I have given you the authority. I have given you peace. You have to hold on to it and not let it go. And that is what the father is saying to you. It is available. His peace, his presence is available. Proverbs 3, verse 3 and 3 and 4. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. So many churches have failed lately because the church members, they're looking at the pastors and they're looking at the wives and they see failure. They don't see God. And because they don't see God, they run away. And you might say, well, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a minister. Yes, you are. If you are a child of the most high God, we are always ministering. Our light is, is, to, is supposed to always shine. When you're in the grocery store, you are a minister. And when you go to bed at night and when you pray, to your, pray with your children and you're leading your children in prayer at night, before they go to sleep, you are ministering. But the question is, are you ministering the way God has preordained you to? Or are you so wrapped up in what the enemy is saying? And you even tell your child, you will never amount to anything. You're not going to be anything. Lord God, but yet the scriptures tell you, the father tells us that if we train up that child, they will not depart from it. It may not look right right now. It may look like that child is not listening. But the father says, if you have trained them, I keep my promises. And I'm a God that does not lie. You might say, well, they are, they are, they're in a prodigal position right now. They have ran away. They're not listening. They're not responding. You can have a prodigal situation right in your house. With your child, with your spouse, whatever it might be, they're not listening. But the Holy Ghost is listening. He sees it. But you don't trust the Father. The, the word of God to, in, in Mark 11, it tells us to have faith in God. So if we have faith in God, he's going to show us the way. Going back to that petition, write it down, make it plain. That is what a vision is all about. Write it down. If there's, you know, I, I, I love my husband and I, I'm telling you, he's a worshiper. I'm telling you, he is a man of prayer. But I didn't always see that. I wanted it. I would cry out for it. Father, I, I, I want him, when, when I'm here studying, I want him to come study with me. I want him to worship with me. And the very things I prayed for years ago, they were manifested now. 
They have been manifesting over the years, over and over and over again. So what I'm saying to you today, write the vision and make it plain. Write the vision for your marriage. So many times through marriage counseling, my husband and I are counseling people, the one thing they fail to do is have a vision. When you come together in a marriage, you're blending. You're blending whatever you learned from your parents and even what you didn't learn. That spouse is bringing in what they learned and what they didn't learn. So then why not use the spirit of unity that Christ has given us and now say, I may not have had it when I was growing up. My children now are going to have it. I'm going to do the best I can to teach them according to the oracles and principles of the word of God. And I'm telling you, when you do that, the Father will show up in your marriages. You will see the transformation of your children. You want them to be worshipers? Then call those things that be not as though they were. You want them to love the word of God like you love the word of God? Then call it out. Write it down. Make it a petition. Father, I thank you that they hunger and thirst after righteousness. Father, I thank you that my husband hungers and thirsts after righteousness. But yet you might say, well, he's out there chasing people. He's out there chasing women. Or you might say, well, you know, Lord forbid, God knows who's on here today. The Holy Spirit knows. And you might be one that's doing the chasing. But I'm telling you right now, the only one that can arrest that chasing is the Holy Ghost. You can say, I am done with that lifestyle. I am done chasing. You might say, well, honey, you don't know. You don't know what I've been going through. My husband goes out and chases every night. Or he doesn't come home. I don't know where he is. The Holy Ghost knows where he is. I remember. <laughs> praying for a young lady one time and she said it's, it's like he, he keeps going out there and 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 I do all I can I'm praying and I and I'm going to the secret place and I said you know what here's the thing you're not praying for the fact that he would no longer be comfortable in that thing so pray that he will no longer be comfortable what does that look like Father, I thank you that every time he even attempts to go out there or she attempts to go out there, I thank you, Father, that the Holy Ghost will cause a burning and a stirring in them, Father, that they would almost kill over to vomit because it's making them sick to go outside of this house. Because this house, Father, is a house of peace. This house, Father, is surrounded and covered by your love. So, Father, I thank you that this marriage bed is honored, Father. I thank you, Father, that every time they try to go out there and creep, there'll be a flat tire. Ha. Something is going to cause him not to be able to go out. And that father, every time he sees me, he smells a sweet aroma. But how does that happen? That means you can't be stinky. What does that mean? You cannot put cologne on a stinky body. And you want him to come home to some freshness? You want him to come home to somebody looking good and you in your gown all day? But yet he goes out to work and everybody's looking good and smelling good. But you won't take a shower. Let's just be real, why don't we? But yet he goes out and everybody's looking good and sounding good and smelling good. But he comes home to you and you're complaining and you're murmuring. And the first thing out of your mouth is a complaint. Baby, the kids did this today. Or baby, we got this mail. We got this horrible news in the mail. Why not first say, honey? I love you and my love for you 
is deep. I may have made a mistake this morning, or you may have made a mistake, but I love you deeply. In Ecclesiastes 4.12, uh, it, it reminds us that uh, the latter part of verse 12, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Remember, we are, we are, we are joined by the Holy Ghost, by the Trinity. What can separate the Trinity? If you would put, and if you would allow the Holy Ghost if you would allow Jesus, if you would allow Yahweh, the Most High God, to be the cord that, that, that keeps you netted together, there's no demon in hell that can come in and se separate you. There's no woman walking around in some tight skirt, skirt that can separate you. There is no man walking around looking all good that can separate you. Why? Because you are unit, you are united with that cord. And there's no demon in hell that can separate you. So your marriage, you are to work together for a divine purpose. Your marriage is not some fluke. Or something just just happened to, to, to happen. It is God ordained. So then you have to go to Him, the one that ordained it, and ask Him, Father, what is the purpose of our relationship? What do you want out of this, Father? You know, if I didn't pray the way that I prayed over the years. Will my children now be worshipers? Every last one of them, they know the Lord, they serve the Lord, and they are worshipers. That didn't happen overnight. That took fervent prayer. That took my husband and I coming together in the spirit of unity. Not disunity, not discord. You have to understand that I, I know I might talk about the enemy a lot, but come on now, he's real. He's real. And he hates your marriage. So why not go to the Father in prayer and supplication for your marriage and do the very thing that the enemy hates? Oh, you hate my marriage? Oh, we're going to be stronger than before. You thought that thing was going to break me? You thought that situation in my marriage was going to break me? It's not going to break me. Because I have been equipped with spiritual weapons. And my weapons are much more powerful than what you can do. Here's the other thing. We fail to put the angels of the Most High God on assignment. Guard my house. Guard my husband. If he goes out there, Father, you know where he's going. Guard him. Put a spiritual rope around him. To your, to your wife. Father, I, I don't know where she's going right now, but you do. Put that Holy Ghost rope around her. <laughs> and pull her back in, Holy Ghost. And you might say, well, is it wrong for me to say with, for my husband or my spouse not to be comfortable if they're out, doing, out there doing wrong? Is it wrong for me to pray for something like that? Yeah, you don't want them comfortable. So, Father, I don't want them comfortable in what they're doing anymore. So, Father, whatever it takes. If they're looking across at that other person's face and making Google eyes and looking all happy and, oh, oh, Father, let them see that demonic presence that's trying to separate me from my, from my spouse. Let them see that. Because what they're seeing right now is not real. Because anything that's coming in to separate your marriage and to separate your unity, it is against the throne of God. So cause that person, Father, to see what you see. 
dosa yera na shegoda, da hera na kante. The father says, <laughs> you have to trust me. You have to trust me. You have tried everything else. You know, there was a saying a long time ago, try God. Let go and try God. The father is saying, I don't want you just to try me. I want you to trust me. That's what I want you to do. And yes, if you're in a relationship and there is abuse, there is always a way out. But you have to seek the father for the way out because maybe he doesn't want you to go out. Maybe there'll be deliverance in that relationship. Maybe the reason for the abuse is because the enemy wants, he doesn't want you to ever reach your potential in your marriage. But the father also knows if you are to get out of it. But the only answer, the only way to know that is to ask the father to seek him. He'll show you, he'll tell you what to do. But I also know this. I know a God that is powerful. I know someone that is powerful. And I tell you, 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 you ask for the presence of the angels in your house where well, someone even, even tries to do, do bad. Those angels are right there, shielding and protecting you. And the person looks back like, whoa, what just happened? Because they just saw the angel of God's presence. The father says, yes, if you would trust me and lean not to your own understanding. So here's the thing, your own understanding got you in trouble. Remember in the days of old? Remember, uh, I, I may not get it straight right now because my, my mind is everywhere right now. But remember Abraham. Remember Abraham and Sarah. <laughs> and so you remember how Sarah convinced Abraham, you know, um, why don't you sleep with, I, I can't think of her name right now. You guys know where I'm trying to go. <laughs> That's so good that I shot that. Here's the thing. <laughs> You're trying to find another way. That, that other way, you know, I, I, I don't see, you know, Sarah's like, I, I don't see what I'm going to give. I, I know the father gave her promise, but I don't see that I'm going to give birth. So there, there has to be another way. But the father keeps his promises. And where did the seed come from? The seed, the true seed that the father was looking for, it's, it came from Sarah and Abraham. But how many of you are looking for the substitute? Do you go to the, to, when you're not feeling well in your marriage, do you go to the, to, to the mall as a substitute to go shopping, to spend money because maybe there's something missing? Did you go out there and buy a new car as a substitute? Well, he's not giving me what I want. I'm going to go out and get that car. And then you realize that the car might smell good for a couple of days. And after a while, that fresh smell in that car, I know they got spray now. You can spray <laughs> and the car will continue to smell good. Ha, huh. come on now. Stop looking for substitutes. Stop looking to your children as a substitute. Well, I'm not getting everything I need. I'll get it from my child. I'll get my hug. Or, or you'll go and you'll, you'll buy that child everything that child wants. You do that, you are opening a door for a nightmare later on. Because then when you're trying to teach that child godly principles, They'll say, well, mommy, I remember you going into your pocketbook and going and getting me everything that I wanted. They're not going to realize the fact it was God that opened the door and brought those blessings into your house. Oh, yes. Father. Father. Cause us, Father, to see you in our marriages. 
Father, we thank you that we get the carnal mind and the flesh. We are new creatures, Father. And because we are new creatures, Father God, cause us, Father God, to see you in our marriages, to see you in our relationships, Father. Father, we bind and curse any witchcrafting spirits, any spirits that have come to divide and separate, we bind and curse those things right now. Father, we thank you for your promises. We thank you, Father, that your promises are yes and amen. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for favor on our marriages, dear God. We thank you, Father, that because of favor, you will open doors unto us, Father, doors that we could have never imagined to be open. You will open them on our behalf. Father, we thank you that our children are blessed. We thank you, Father, that you will show us, Father, you will show the wives how to be virtuous. You will show the men, Father, how to be mighty men of valor. Because we would dare go into the secret place, Father, where you would tell us secret things, where your presence will abide with us, Father. We need your presence these days, Lord, like never before. We need your abiding presence. Dwell with us, Father. And every time, Father, the enemy tries to come in, Father, we thank you that we will resist him. And Father, we thank you for the spirit of discernment. And that, Father, you will reveal the secret things to us. Father, we bow to you. We repent right now, Father. If we have said or done anything in our marriages <clears throat> that has not pleased you, we repent even now, Father. Show us, Father. Reveal it to us, Father. So that we can put those petitions before you, Father, that are lined up with your word and not with our flesh. Show us, Father, the righteous way of doing things. Show us, Father, the holy way of doing things. You said, Father, that we could get the principal thing. And where we have failed to get the principal thing of wisdom, Father, we are crying out for it now, Father, just like Father God in the days of old, Lord. When Solomon asked how to lead the people, we're asking you, Father, how to be leaders in our marriages. And so, Father, if we ask you for that, you would give us the very thing, Father, we didn't even know we needed, which was wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And it will bring wealth. And so, Father, we thank you. Be magnified and be glorified in the mighty name of your son, Yeshua Messiah. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. God bless. God bless. Amen. amen. Thank you so much. What a powerful word. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We thank you so much for talking to us. We thank you for being our King and our God. What a blessing. What a blessing. Thank you so much, Minister Cassandra. Um, Minister Esther, I'll just let you dive right in so we can continue uh, the flow without interruption. God bless you. Oh, maybe I need to allow you to unmute yourself. Let me see. Okay, go for it. Amen, amen. I have no words. The Holy Spirit has already spoken. I have nothing to add, only what the Holy Spirit will add. That's what I will say because it has all been given to us. The Spirit of God has spoken and it's us just to know what to get, where to go to. Go to. When I was seeking the Lord about the word to give today, the Lord asked me, why, 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 why struggle? You need to know the cause of the problem. What's the cause of our marriages that they are dying today? What's the cause that is 
making us cry today. And the Lord took me all the way to the book of Genesis. It was about Laban and Jacob. That when Laban, when Jacob decided to leave, he left and he took the daughters and he took the sons. And when we go to the book of uh, Genesis, the Bible tell us all about that. But before we go, let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you're worthy and you're mighty. We thank you for this minute. I thank you for this hour. I have no words, Lord, to speak to your people. Only what is of your oracle, God. May you use me as a vessel for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name I pray. We're going to read in the book of Genesis chapter 31, verse 28. And the Bible says, And you did not allow me to kiss. This was Laban talking. And you did not allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Now you have done foolishly in so doing. It is in my power to harm you. But the God of your father spoke to me last night saying, be careful that you speak what you speak to Jacob, neither good nor bad. And now you have surely gone because you are greatly long for your father's house. But why did you steal my God? It's so sad that in our marriages, we have stolen some gods and we have them. And believe it or not, who had stolen the gods? Let's read that form. Now Rachel had taken the house idols and put them in the camel saddle and sat on them. And Laban sat all about the tent and did not find them. And she said to her father, let, let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise before you for the manner of my woman is with me. And he searched and did not find the household idol. That's where the cause of the problem started. Rachel was the one who brought the fight between Jacob and Laban. When Laban was running after Jacob, he was running after him because his God, his idol was stolen. But the idol was stolen by Rachel and she sat on it. He, she hid it. And you know what? It brought, it brought chaos because when you continue reading from 36, you can see that Jacob became so angry. He even started telling him, Alaba, I've worked for you for 20 years. Six years I took care of your flocks. Seven years I worked for, for, for a wife. You tricked me. You give me Leah. When I worked for another seven, you gave me uh, Rachel. But now you are even accusing me of stealing a god, an idol. And he had even spoken, whoever will have that idol, she, he, let him die. In our marriages, we have brought up idols. The Lord was telling me we have idols. What kind of idols do we have? We have brought idols of selfishness. We have brought idols of jealous. We have idols of pride. We have idol of money that we are sitting on them in our marriages. And you know what? They are killing our marriages. Laban and Jacob became like enemies at that moment because as a son, he was not supposed to talk back to, uh, to, to the father-in-law, but he was talking back because he was angry. He could not stand what the father-in-law had done to him. But guess what? The precious daughter of, of Laban, the precious wife of Jacob was the one sitting on the idol, the idol that was bringing chaos in the home. What idol are you sitting on? What idol have you brought in your marriage? It doesn't have to be an idol that you see. It can be an idol that what you value, that selfishness, that jealous, that unforgiving heart. It's an idol before God. We are sitting on it in the marriage. It's causing us to have problems with in-laws. Now this was an in-law. And who brought the chaos was, was Rachel. Who was the daughter? Who was the precious girl that the dad valued so much? But you know what? She brought all the things with her and sat on them in a secret way. We look beautiful here. I look beautiful. I've struggled with unforgiving her. I used to pile everything in my heart. I used to put it... From day one, I could say, yes, you did this to me. One word I could put, go back. And I remember the date, the time, and even the, the hour. That's how blessed I am to remember. And the devil could put anger 
and unforgiving. And the Lord revealed to me, that's an idol you're holding, unforgiving. And if you continue for un not forgiving, you're not going to be blessed. I'm not going to be blessed. I'm a nurse and I work, used to work night shift. At 3 a.m., I used to go to my car and pray. And one time God spoke to me as I was praying my regular prayer. You need to forgive your husband. You need to forgive your husband. I thought it's just a voice, maybe just a, you know. But when I saw the light and I shook, I knew this is God. And when I forgave, the joy of salvation was in my heart. The joy of marriage came back. Because I don't want to look back. And the devil is a liar. He'll come check around and try to remind you. But you know what? I remind him, you are a liar. You belong under my feet. Rachel had an idol that she sat on. You know what destroyed this home? Destroyed Rachel was that idol. She did not see Joseph grow as a teenager. She did not even breastfeed her son, Benjamin. Everything was going astray. I don't know what idol you have hold that is making your children to go astray. I don't know what idol you are holding that is making you to have conflict even with your in-laws. Maybe it's an idol of gossip. You have destroyed your husband in your in-laws. He's a drunkard. He drinks. I don't even have enough money to pay the school fees. No, don't sit on that idol. Go seek Jesus. He is the solution of everything. He's going to heal you. He's going to heal that marriage. When we sit on our own idols, they are not going to do anything. The idol of unforgiveness, the idol of jealousy. He's doing better than I'm doing. It's not going to help us. It's for us to stand and say, I'm not going to sit on this idol. I'm not going to be rich or sitting on an idol. I see myself dying with blood pressure, with blood sugar, because of those idols we are sitting on them. We refuse to sit on the idol in the mighty name of Jesus. Rachel sat on the idol. At the end of it, she died. The husband was a servant of God. She just thought, oh, he's just a shepherd. But she knew, she knew he's a servant of God because she didn't have children. And when she didn't have children, her barren, her, her, her womb was closed. And you know what? Substitute, as Miss Cassandra was saying, the Lord was reminding me, patience with us is lacking. And that's why we are looking for idols to bring. The Lord was reminding me, people are going to secret prayers when they go to night, night when nobody can see them to go pray so that they can pray for their husband. I break that in the mighty name of Jesus. May you stand in the light of God. May you seek God with no idol. When Sarah didn't have a child, she was impatient that she brought her in her life. She brought that what was to destroy her marriage. The same Rachel, when she found out that, you know, I don't know, I can't wait any longer. You can't wait any longer for that husband. God is going to do something. God is going to turn it around. Rachel could not wait longer. And she brought Bilha to get a baby. And that's why she was sitting on an idol. She was scared. I don't know what's going to happen. But let me tell you, God won't. Laban, even before he got to Jacob, don't harm him. Don't do anything bad to him. Who are we to do bad to our husband? Who are we to do bad to our wives? When you slap that woman, when you call that woman a word, when you call that husband a name, there's nothing. He has no, he has no brain. Are you thinking that God is looking at you? Are you thinking, what is it that I'm uttering with my mouth? You know, a marriage is a ministry. And the Lord was reminding it is a ministry of two people. You know, when you get married to your husband, you carry his past, you carry his present, and you carry everything, even what. So if he was, he was weak, he will con you have to work with that weakness. If he was strong, you're going to continue working. If he was 
with anger issue if he had you know he was very polite like my husband you continue working with it you don't even know what to say but you know what is a ministry but only god can intervene in this ministry of marriage not the idols of hiding behind the husband not the idols of hiding behind the wives not the idols of exposing them without anybody may god give us wisdom may god help us not to go seeking other gods that are not worthy not the idol of jealous not the idol of pride not the idol of money god is elevating us women Wives, we are being elevated for the glory and honor of God. When God puts you up there, don't think you have been put up there so that you can undermine him. God is putting you up there so that you can lift him up for the glory and honor of God. The Bible says in the Proverbs chapter that you are, that woman who is called blessed, that woman that is praised by, by, by the husband. Can you imagine when you see that husband good looking? You know, look at Pastor Nicholas. He's good looking. But guess who did the work? The wife did the work. Maybe even they had a quarrel. I don't like this shirt. It's not good looking. But you know what? It's the truth. Oh, this tie is not my type. But the wife will be, that's the beautiful one. And when he goes, oh, we see him. He's very handsome, good looking. But the wife did it. And she don't come here saying, you know, I did. I did. I did. No. Don't sit in the idol of praising and saying, I did. God does it. He has given you wisdom to build your home. With your hands, you can build. With your hands, you can destroy. I thank God. There's no marriage that is easy. I've been married for 20 years. Somebody might ask, what does she know now? 20 years? What does she know? I know I've been there. I've walked through it all. But I thank God. I decided not to sit on an idol. I decided to sit with the king. I decided to take Jesus as my personal savior, to take my secrets to him. This is a word my sister minister Zawadi always used to encourage me. When somebody is in the desert, don't go to the desert and walk with them. Let them finish their desert. And it's very true. You might be walking in that desert, but in that desert, whom are you trusting? Are you trusting that idol of going to, uh, you know, those uh, fortune tellers who will tell you tomorrow and the other day going to happen? Are you trusting those people who are telling you, take this plant and plant in your home and there will be peace? Are you sitting on that kind of an idol? It's about time. We stand with our marriages. We stand with the word of God. The Bible, say, the Bible says in Psalms 119 verse 11, that I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. I'm not perfect. I used to be called by my husband, Mama Kelele. And I used to tell God, I don't want to be Mama Kelele anymore because he's polite. So what I talk, it might reflect as a, you know, like a, a noise. But I thank God, the Lord put in me, Proverbs 15, 1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh answer stirs up anger. That word has been with me all the time. When I answer my children, when I answer my husband, that's the word that has always guided me. But the most of it all, what idol are you holding? That's the cause of the marriages to break. Because we are holding idols. The idol of selfish, the idol of he didn't do this to me. He didn't buy this to me. He didn't tell me I love you. He, the jealous, you know, so-and-so has this. I don't have this. Or, you know, I went to their home. They have this. We don't have this in our home. You know, all these kind of idols, we need to put them down in Jesus' name. We need to take the cross. The cross was the place where all was done. Even our marriages are going to be done in the cross. There's nothing good like to rely on the Holy Spirit. When you rely on the Holy Spirit, he will reveal to you even the things who come. You don't need to go to somebody. He, when somebody comes, tells you, it will be a confirmation in Jesus' name. 
You don't need to sit and I don't so and so is the only one. No, let's seek God. Let's seek the Holy Spirit to speak to us. He will reveal to you even when he's going astray. You yourself, when you are straight, the spirit of God will not give you peace. He will speak to you. Now you are doing A, B, C, D. Leave it in Jesus' name. Or I come with my whip. And no joke, God whips. He's a whipper. He can whip you. But if we surrender all, surrender all and say no more idol in my life, only Jesus. He's able to do it in our marriage. That word you have been taking to your home, he's a drunkard, he don't support, he don't do this to the children. Stop! Start speaking good things about your husband. Yes, he's there, he's fine. Nobody wants to know the negative. As our ministers have said, you will not go back and say now it's working good. Only the bad. And they always remember the bad. Oh. Even though you see them, they have undergone. But this ministry of marriage is an institute of two forgivers. He forgive and you forgive and you continue with the journey. Let's take away the idols in our lives as women of God, as husband. If father-in-law Jacob and Laban was heavy, and let's hear what he said at the end, because they had to make a covenant. When you continue with that verse that you want, they made a covenant with Jacob. And at the end, he had fear in him. He, he said this to Jacob. If you afflict my daughters, that's verse 50, chapter 31, verse 50. If you afflict my daughters, or if you take other wives beside my daughters, although no man is with us to see, God is witness between me and you. He was afraid. Those days, he was afraid as a dad about his daughters. He was afraid as a father-in-law because he could not do anything to this Jacob. The same thing our parents are afraid. Their daughters to do well. The same thing the, the mothers and fathers are afraid for, those, for their sons to do well. I just pray they will have peace. But the idol we are sitting on, like Rachel, we prevent us to see the destiny of our children, the destiny of our marriage. We need to lose the idols. We need to stand with the word of God. We need to stand with Christ. We need to let the Holy Spirit direct us, not just by the word of our mouth, but with action. When you forgive, you forget. Not you forgive and you remind in Jesus' name. Let's stand. As ministers or in marriage, who knows what they are doing? When he comes home drunkard, love him. Tell him, I love you. Love conquers all. And you know what? In the book of Corinthians, chapter 1 Corinthians 13, from 14 says, from 4 says, love is not, does not, does not keep a record of wrong. It's not rude. It's not selfish. It's not. So love is love. Love is patient, long-suffering. Don't be like Rachel and, 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 and Rebecca who are not patient. It's long-suffering and waiting. And if you're an orphan and you're married, let me tell you, you are the best person even to seek God. He is your father. He is your mother. When you call him, he hearkens unto you. He's the father and the mother of the fatherless. So when you cry to him, he hears your prayer before he hears mine. Because me, maybe I'll even think of talking to my mom or my dad. But you, you have no one else to turn to. Leave that idol alone. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Father in heaven. He will hear you. When you cry, tell him, I have no mom to talk to. I have no dad to talk to. But only you, God, can see the affliction of my marriage. He will come running to your rescue. Because his promises are yes and amen. May God have mercy on us. May God remember us. These are the last days. 
May we see what the may God reveal to us what is the cause of the problem in my marriage, in this ministry of marriage, because it's a ministry, it's not easy. And you you took each other with the luggages from the past, the present, even for the future. You have them all. It's a package. You need to ask God, how am I going to do it? Only by the grace of God. Only through Christ who died for us in the cross. If you don't have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I encourage you to accept him and to let him be your Savior. Because once he's your Savior, he will reveal to you. He's not going to leave you alone. The Holy Spirit will get into you. That even when things are going wrong, in the spirit realm, the Spirit of God will show things are not wrong. When you are in the wrong, he will teach you. He will tell you, you are not in the right, Esther. Come back in the way of the Lord. May God bless you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment. Nothing of our own, Lord, only you, you can intervene in our marriages. We commit our marriages in the blood of Jesus Christ. You are the one who blessed marriages. You are the one who started marriages. May you intervene in us. May we seek you, Jesus. May we turn to you. May we leave all the idols and come to the cross. We pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God. What a powerful word. Thank you so much, um, Minister Esther. Thank you so much. I actually um, have a personal experience to share with you. And when I start, you, you, I mean, after this, anybody is... Um, welcome to share because we're getting to a place where now I will open up. Just be thinking about the questions that you may have. Anything that you would like to ask even in the chat, you can ask in the chat, you can ask individually, or we're going to open the forum in a little bit. So I just wanted to share with you that as Minister Cassandra and Minister Esther have said, anything in your marriage, the very first person who should know is God. He already knows it. He wants to hear from you. Like I said, and I keep saying, God is not going to get involved in anything you do not involve him in. Is he looking at your marriage? Yes. Is he looking at things that are going wrong? Yes. Can he see it? Yes. But he's waiting for your involvement. He's Even Jesus, remember at the wedding of Canaan, he was still there when the wine ran out. He did not do anything until his mother involved him in the wedding. God will not get involved in anything you do not involve him with. Just like even in the storm, when there was a storm and he was sleeping in the boat, the only time he got up to calm the storm is when he was involved. Until they called him, he was still there. Not to say that he was a deep sleeper, no. There's no one point that they said that they tried to wake him up, he couldn't wake up, no. He was just waiting. When are they going to call me? He knew this storm is continuing. <laughs> when are they going to call me? He knew it. The minute they called him, he woke up and he calmed the storm. So before you go running up and down like the disciples who are trying to stop the storm with every, within the, among themselves, trying to tell everybody else about your marriage, trying to run to your parents before you even talk to God, the storm will keep going. Your boat might even sink. Your boat might get holes, right? The only way I learned to do is when I realized, the Holy Spirit told me, how long will you be running to other people to help your marriage? The minute you stop relying on others and rely on me, I will show you how. And he did. He told me that as long as you have the keys to your marriage, as long as you're holding your marriage in your hands, the enemy is going to take it away from you. The only way is to give Jesus your marriage. Remember when we began this um, session today, he said that our marriages need salvation. How do you save your marriage? By giving it to Christ. Just like you give your life to Jesus, give your marriage to Jesus. That is the salvation of marriages. I got up and I said, okay, fine, the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking to anybody else because I had already dialed a number to call that person to tell them how my husband was treating me. And when the Holy Spirit told me, until how long are you going to keep doing this? I said, okay, Holy Spirit, I hear you. I went into my living room and I said, 
I am so sorry for having my marriage. I actually held my hands up like this. And I was holding my marriage like I was holding something in my hands. And I said, I'm so sorry for taking my, my marriage in my hands. Because when my marriage is in my hands and I'm leaning on my own understanding, like Cassandra has told us, the Bible says, do not lean on your own understanding. Do it God's way. As long as I had, I was doing it my way, it was failing and the enemy could snatch it from me anytime. But I said, Lord Jesus, I take the key to my marriage, I lock it and I give my marriage to you. And I lifted up my hands and my hands were, were lifted up. And I just kept going around in my living room saying, take my marriage, Jesus, take my marriage, Jesus, take my marriage, Jesus. Do you know what happened to my hands? As I was holding them up, all of a sudden they fell down as if a very heavy thing was taken away from me. I was actually carrying the weight. Let me tell you, the weight of your marriage is too heavy. Stop carrying it. The enemy can snatch it from you, but he can never snatch it from Christ. From that day, things started changing in my marriage. Did it get better? Yes, with each and every day. Let me tell you, as Esther said, we have been married for so long. You know, first of all, me, I got married when I was 19. Eh? So I've been married over 20 something years. I won't say so that you don't know my age. No, I'm just messing with you. But I've been married for so many years. I'm going to be 23 now, 23 years in marriage. But for over 20 years, still my marriage was struggling. And until I decided to give my marriage to Jesus, and not just that, you give your marriage to Jesus. And then he says, now we are working on you. And I say, what about my husband? He's doing this, he's doing that. He says, um, we are working on you. We're not working on your husband. God wants you to come first. Just like Cassandra said, do not be stinky and you want your husband to smell good. For me, I didn't take it as a, as a physical stink. You're stinking spiritually. You are stinking as a wife, yet you want your husband to smell good. How? Well, if God fixes your husband and he smells good, or God fixes your wife and she smells good, what about you? You're going to mess up the aroma, right? So the first person that you can deal with, and something, you know, whenever you have a problem, you take care of the problem how you can be able to take care of. So the first person you can only change is you. So you work with God to change you, to make you everything he wants you to be. His daughter, the wife, the husband that he wants you to be that you can represent him well in your marriage. Because if you misrepresent God, then you have to answer for it. Remember, if your marriage is not saved, if it is not delivered from the hands of the enemy, if it is not restored, you know you're going to answer for it and you, it might take you to hell. Because the commandments in the marriage are the same commandments. Even the people who are not married, they are given commandments to follow. So if you do not follow the commands in the marriage, you cannot stand before God and say, ah, that was just marriage in, on earth. I, I get free to go free for that. No. We have to totally rely on the Holy Spirit, totally rely on God. My husband and I are friends because I decided to allow God to change me. I decided to allow God to work with me. I decided me first. And then it gets to a point where you are tired of the one who's saying sorry. You are tired of the one who's bringing reconciliation. You are tired of me. It got to a point I said, I told God, now, how long will I continue doing this while I'm not getting any reciprocating? Do you know what word he, tell, he told me? Do not be wary of well-doing. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. There is a reason why Jesus says some things. Do not be tired. Because you know what? You're going to do good until you get tired. You'll continue doing good and there's no reciprocal of your good. And it is going to be for a long time. So do not give up. Brace yourself. Esther said, love is patient. You be patient and keep doing good. Be patient and keep loving. Be patient and keep praying for that person. But let me tell you, there came a time when I had somebody said, he said, this person said that God warned me about my, this is, the, it was a man, he was saying that God warned him about his wife. He said, if your wife, if, uh, calling the, the wife, my daughter, God told him, if my daughter comes to me crying because of you, you will answer. Now, when I heard that, I asked God, now me, you, 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 you spoke for this one, you spoke for this lady. I'm also your daughter. Can't you go and speak to my husband on my behalf? Can't you just say something and, and you know, warn him? <laughs> God is faithful. 
Keep doing good. Keep working with God. He's going to warn your husband for you. He's going to speak on your behalf. And guess what? He spoke on my behalf. My husband, when one of these days, he will give you a testimony. But God spoke on my behalf. And now I not only have a friend for a husband. I not only have a friend for a lover. Watch is this and what the, the things that people say friends with benefit. No, we are friends. <laughs> and not only are we with benefits, we have we are legally, we can legally enjoy each other sexually because we are friends. You, it's, you know, it's better to go to, to, to make love to your friend than your enemy, right? Or somebody that you it's like you're you are make, doing a service. Doing a service like the prostitutes, they just do service and they keep moving on. But God does not want us to just do that. He wants us to be knit together, to be friends, to love each other, and to that for that union to be like God. So remember, the first person to tell, even if you have parents, should be God. And the only person to tell you how to deal with your marriage should be God. Because mm -hmm. nobody knows what your marriage has been destined for apart from God. Mm -hmm. God oh, bless you so much. I am going to actually invite um, Reverend Priscilla, because I know this is our last day uh, for the three-day marriage fast. I want to give the ministers, if you have something um, to add on, Reverend Priscilla, and then Reverend Priscilla, please um, give it to uh, Minister Mary and Pastor Nicholas. And then we open the forum for everybody else so that we can just be able to just wind up and tell God, thank you. Because let me tell you, even if you don't see a change that has happened immediately, things have happened. Things have happened in the spiritual realm. Take what you have received today, run with it, act it, put it in action. You'll be amazed at what God has done and will continue to do in your marriage. So God bless you. I'm going to give you um, the opportunity to admit yourself, Reverend. Are you available? Reverend Priscilla? Okay, if Reverend is not available, Minister um, Mary and Pastor Nicholas, are you available? Yeah, let, let me restart. Okay. Yeah, I just, I yeah. You. yeah. Okay. Hello, I greet you in the name of the Lord. I am so excited, I'm so blessed. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Zawadi, uh, for hearing the Spirit of God. Indeed, I can see what God meant when we were starting these prayers, these three days. God said very, very open, and I was praying that God help us so that I can be available. Sometimes I like to be in for three days, but uh, mostly I'm not because of I have to take care of the kids. But this time, I really thank God that God have uh, enabled me to be here for these three days. And I wanted so much to be here because when uh, the first time when I was praying for this meeting, I felt the Spirit of God saying that this is the day. It's a dawning of a new day for our families, for our marriages, because God wants to uh, reflect the power of his son, Jesus Christ, through our marriages. And I have seen it. I, do, I don't want to take much time. I know uh, I talked a lot the other day. So I just want to just, I don't know even where to start because my diary and my notebook, they are almost full of the, what God has said. And as uh, Minister Zawadi have said, we are learning with this because God is transforming our lives and he's going to use us to change the world and to utter the move of God, whatever God is doing in our marriages. This is not only our marriages. I am seeing God using our families to reflect the glory of God that is about to dawn, that people will, you know, people have been like, where is the church that Christ died for? Guess what? It has started now. Hallelujah. From this day, I have seen, my husband has been called to, uh, God gave him a, a, a call for revival. And that's why we go Saturday for revival meetings. And uh, them that were there on Sunday, on Saturday, God started this uh, speaking that we need to speak the word of God. And the prayer that we were praying was about the word of God. And this is what God has spoken here. Um, on last week, on Wednesday, when I was praying for this week's um, three days, God spoke to me. I woke up in a dream and I shared with my mom and my husband with the word. Sometimes when God speaks to me, um, I, he speaks to me with a, 
a vocabulary and I would wake up as vocabulary that I am not aware at that time. I may, I have a little guess of it, but then I will go to the computer and I will see, I will check to see what that word meant. So when I was, uh, I, I, I woke up and I, it was about debilitation, spiritual debilitation. And I was like, what is debilitation? And so I went and I saw that it is a, a spirit of arising and uh, disabling making people not to move forward. And that is what God has been speaking. And I'm so blessed because God spoke through all of us. He spoke through my sister, uh, Esther Mishuki. God bless you so very much. When you are talking about the woman with the bedded, the bedded, uh, I mean, back, she had a debilitating spirit because that spirit was disabling her. She could not do anything. And that is what the devil had done to the church to our marriages that he have been disabling us, that we are not able to do. And uh, yesterday, uh, Pastor not Vicky, Vicky and uh, the husband, okay, I remember Vicky. Uh, yeah. Okay, the husband's name, Kevin. yeah, Kevin. it was FF, I think, uh, Vivi. Uh, okay, Kevin. yeah, she was, uh, they said this thing, and that uh, uh, one thing is that uh, the enemy have stolen the word of God. And uh, you know what, if I can summarize the whole thing that God has given us today, is that this is what the devil did. He stole the word of God from our hearts, and he has repressed it with the negatives, the idols, my sister, you have spoken. We have repressed that with the negativity towards our spouses, towards our families. Uh, and now he has already achieved the spirit of debilitating us, causing us not to be what God have intended us to be. But it praise be to the name of the Lord, as uh, Sister Cassandra have told us, that this is the season of restoration, because in this meeting, God have given us testimonies. Every minister who was speaking was talking about how God have done it before. And if the same God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is doing it today, and he will continue to do it even to end. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And therefore, I believe it as the word of God says in Revelation 12, verse, verse 11, that they overcame by the power of their testimony and the power of the blood of Jesus. We are victors in the mighty name of Jesus. Because as in from today, we are not going to sit upon the idols. We are not going to, we are going to take off everything that the devil had pressed in our marriages. And we are going to put Jesus at the center of our marriages. And we are going to stand by the word of God. Not what the world is saying concerning our marriages. Not what God is going to, I mean, what, what we think or how we see. But we are going to stand upon the word of God. We are going to stand upon the promises of God. Praise be to the name of God. I have seen chains breaking. For the Bible says that the Son of God came to set us free. And once he set us free, oh my, we are free and we are free indeed. So this day, I believe that we are going to do according to the word of God in Colossians 3, verse 23 and 24. That he says, in everything that you do, do it unto the Lord. May God bless you. We'll continue praying for you. We love you. We love you. I'm so much blessed. And I believe our lives, our marriages, our families are never the same again. The Lord has done a good work in us. A new day has done for all of us. And we shall see God magnified, Jesus glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessing. My wife has said it all. I had three things uh, as we come to the end of the meeting. Always this kind of marriage seminars and marriage meetings ends with many who might be uh, having a question like, I need to know more, or what would be the next step? What do I do? So uh, if you're at that point, just make sure that you keep on contacting uh, uh, our sister Zawadi. Uh, the meeting hangs when it is at the climax or when you, we are feeling like we need more, we need more, or I need to be helped here. And then through that, you'll be helped. Uh, at the end of the a marriage meeting or a seminar like this, I always say, continue pressing on and waiting upon the Lord. There's spiritual way of dealing with the matters. That's what we have done in those three days. 
and therefore wait upon the Lord, he is coming at his own time. If you are in abusive marriage and you find that your life is in danger, as you wait for the Lord, do not continue. When life is in danger, make sure that you always take the next step of looking for help, talking with somebody if life is in danger. Otherwise, continue holding on, waiting for the Lord. He's surely coming. Now, the other thing I wanted to, uh, I, I, which was in me when I, about the last day, I was praying so much yesterday about today, is uh, God is raising an army in this area. And through what has been happening within these three days, three days, three days, and, and uh, got that confirmation when uh, our sister Esther was talking and talking of when God talked to you, uh, the other person is just but a confirmation. If you are feeling this is a confirmation of what God has been putting in you, yesterday he stressed it in me. He's raising an army to be praying for marriages, not just for these three days of the beginning of the year. Please, if you are hearing that, I felt it and I know he is doing it. That anointing is falling upon many, not just the ones who are online today, but even the ones who will hear this later. Just obey, take it over, run with it. He reminded me how this meeting started, that in the beginning of this year, we were praying on Saturday during our interdenominational meeting. God used a certain sister to speak. She called my sister to talk about the women. And the women meeting began. It is being done every other month. We'll have one at the end of this meet, at the end of this month, March. And uh, when my wife shared with Reverend Priscilla, the next person she shared with was uh, Sister Zawadi, gift. And the, as she was sharing, Sister Zawadi also said, God has also spoken and I'm starting the marriage meetings. And then uh, yesterday he was... Now, it's not just about that, but this anointing is being released. If you feel it and you feel this is a confirmation, jump in, join uh, Gift Zawadi to be a Nami, which is forming, to be interceding and praying for prayers. I mean, for marriages. God bless you. And please welcome to our Saturday morning prayers. We pray at the same time, like the time we are meeting now. And at the end of the meeting, uh, she will be hosting a uh, women's meeting. Please jump in. Uh, uh, we request uh, our sister Gift to uh, send the links so that you can jump in uh, on Saturdays and uh, also on uh, at the end of the month. God bless you. God bless you. It was a good thing to be with you for these three days. Looking forward to next month. I exalt you and declare your praises before people. God, as we give you praises for these three days of marriage prayers, I pray that Jehovah God, as we log out and look forward to next month, my God and my Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will help each one of us, O oh God, to put into practice what you have said to us, O oh God. I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will be upon every man, every woman, and to help us, Jehovah God, be obedient to what you have said to us, O oh Lord. James said that we be not just hearers, but doers of your word. Oh, how I pray that we will find you will find doers of this word in our families, O oh God, in the husbands, in the wives, O oh God. And as we started, Jehovah God, praying for a healing in the families. God, I pray that Jehovah Father, you will intervene. You will minister in every marriage, oh God. And you cause a healing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, your word has been going through. And all of it has been telling us that you will come. And when we release our burdens to you, you care. I pray, oh God that you may follow your word to accomplish in the name of Jesus. For many who have been in the gap praying for themselves or praying for others, for their children, Jehovah God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, 
you will follow your word even to accomplish it in the name of Jesus. Many who are waiting for answers, O oh Lord, I pray that they will not be disappointed, O oh God. They have been waiting upon you, O oh God. They have been seeking you, O oh Jehovah. You are saying, we will find you when we seek you diligently, O oh God. This is what we have been doing. I pray that at the end of these three days, O oh God, Lord, let us see you, O oh Jehovah God, in our marriages, O oh Lord. Let us see uh, it, O oh God. You tell us to come when we are here, right? and you give us rest. I pray that you give rest now, Jehovah God, to sisters and brothers who have been crying for their marriages, O oh God, and for parents who have been crying for the marriages of their children in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are Jehovah God, you want to glorify yourself through perseverance, going through and overcoming. I pray that you'll give enough grace to a person who needs to persevere so that you can be glorified when they overcome. Your word tells us we are victors. We have to overcome. We have to go through it so that we may come out victorious without even smelling smoke. Now I pray for the ones who still have to go through it, Jehovah, for your glory, that Jehovah, you'll give enough grace to wait upon you. David said he waited patiently, giving up grace so that Jehovah, everyone that has to wait, will wait with enough grace for your time to be glorified through their victory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for uh, our sister uh, Zawadi Gift who obeyed your voice to be calling us for three days to pray for marriages to stand in the gap. Renew her strength, give her grace, and Jehovah God let the anointing of the Holy Spirit be upon her so that she may get more and more wisdom and knowledge on how to move through and move this ministry in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the other ministers. My Reverend Priscilla, Jehovah God, Minister Esther, Jehovah, Minister Cassandra and the husband of God, and also Victor, uh, who spoke to us, oh Jehovah, and the others who are on the line and in this ministry, though they did not get a chance now, I pray that for their humanity of coming to support this ministry and be there, God will be there for them. He who quenches shall be quenched. I pray that you quench every ministry that has been represented, the ministry, every ministry that has participated, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, as we come to the end, receive all the glory, receive all the honor. It's not to any man, it's all to you. So God, we end the meeting giving it all back to you. Receive it, and it is in Jesus' name that we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory and honor. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. You're such a blessing. I just thank God for you. Thank you.